Good morning and welcome to the Consumer Protection and Business Committee. Today is March 17th, 2023. We are going to have a public hearing on Senate Joint Memorial 8001, starting with a staff briefing from Ms. Rusk. Go ahead, Michelle. Good morning, Chair Wallen and members of the committee. Michelle Rusk, staff to this committee. Before you is Senate Joint Memorial 8001 concerning a national infrastructure bank. In 2021, the National Infrastructure Bank Act was introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives. That bill would create the National Infrastructure Bank, which would facilitate long-term financing of infrastructure projects. It would do this by providing loans to public and private entities to finance, develop, and operate eligible projects. Projects must have a public sponsor and have local, regional, or national significance to be eligible for a loan. Projects must also comply with several federal and state requirements, including using only certain nationally produced construction materials and paying laborers local prevailing wages. The bill also provides several requirements concerning establishing the bank and the bank's anticipated operations. Turning to the Senate Joint Memorial before you, SJM 8001 requests that the U.S. Congress pass and the President signs the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2021 or similar legislation into law. That concludes my remarks and I'm happy to take any of your questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Ms. Rusk? Great, then we'll hear from the prime sponsor. Good morning, Senator Hasegawa. Chair Wallen, um, thank you so much for hearing uh, this, what I think is a very important bill. And uh, I'm kind of uh, humbled because I have two bills and they're the only two bills that are on your agenda today. So thank you. Um, so this is a joint memorial and you know that I've been working to try and create a publicly owned state bank for quite some time. Oh, my bad, I gotta turn this off. Um, so this is sort of a national version of a publicly owned bank and it's not unprecedented. These, this is the following almost identically the structure that previous presidents have used when they've been in a pinch and wanted to jumpstart the economy, economic development. Franklin Roosevelt had the, Nas the National Reconstruction Bank Corporation is what he called it. Um, and that's what he used to finance huge projects in the New Deal uh, building the Columbia Basin Project, uh, building up our infrastructure capacity to win World War II, um, it electrified the United States, uh, every house and address in the U.S. So it's, it's a really functional tool that we, especially right now, need some way because we hear about how our um, debt is just going through the roof now. I, I can't, I don't even know how many trillions of dollars the debt is at right now, but it's impeding Congress's ability to do many other needed things. So the way it works is um, it will be capitalized. Um, it, it actually won't cost any tax dollars and doesn't increase the debt whatsoever to capitalize the bank. They will um, offer a premium on U.S. Treasury bonds to people who hold U.S. Treasury bonds and pay a premium on those bonds uh, to entice them to invest instead in the bank itself. And then it will become a, a depository. So if it capitalizes, their goal is to capitalize with $500 billion, that actually leverages out to $5 trillion worth of lending capacity for infrastructure. The American Society of Civil Engineers right now says that we are at something like a C minus or a D as far as the rating for the quality of our infrastructure and our incapacity to maintain what we have, let alone develop new infrastructure for future economic development. If you've looked at some of our global competitors, they all are building infrastructure using a public financing strategy similar to what the National Infrastructure Bank is. We, on the other hand, in the U.S., rely on commercial banks to finance our lending capacity. <clears throat> Not our lending capacity, but to finance our ability to build infrastructure. So that, if, take for example, a billion, we, we sell, as a state, we may sell 
couple billion dollars in bonds, but depending on the interest rate that we pay on those bonds over time, it could cost four billion for two billion dollars of usable money today over the next 25, 30 years, however long it takes to pay off that bond. So you can imagine when we're pyramiding bonds on top of bonds on top of bonds, our capacity to finance infrastructure just goes down the tube, our usable cash that we can use. So we need a new tool, and this is a proven tool. It's been um, endorsed by CSG East, uh, Council of State Governments took it up and endorsed it. Uh, the National Caucus, National Asian Pacific American Caucus of State Legislatures has endorsed it. Uh, the National Black Caucus of State Legislators has endorsed it. Um, minority Contractors, National Minority Contractors has endorsed it. Many organizations have endorsed this at the national level. So uh, I think that because it has equity provisions within the bill, and it also has, um, well, it's been, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's, it's um, let me see, who all has endorsed it? I mean, the, there's a National Black Congress of, uh, no, National Congress of Black Women have endorsed it. Anyway, just as an example, um, I think that right now is the time for us to do something bold. And this could finance, I think, about 100% of the need that has been identified by the American Society of Civil Engineers at this point. So um, I appreciate your consideration. This bill was passed out of, I'm not sure how the House here uh, divides up portfolios, but it did pass out of this or a similar committee last year and actually got pulled out of rules and died on the House floor calendar. So I'm hoping that you'll consider it again this time and get it off the floor. Thank you. Yeah, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Senator Hasegawa? Representative Hackney has a question. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, so this is a, a, a joint memorial. What is the impact of a joint memorial? Representative and seatmate, um, a joint memorial, some refer to them as sort of letters to Santa because they don't create law, but they do put our state in an official position as being on record and we make that record, uh, make that request to Congress and the president to take some sort of action. The nice thing about a joint memorial is it doesn't need to go to the governor's desk for a signature. It just goes straight out of here as our message to Congress. Thank you. And any other questions for the Senator? Representative Re Vice Chair Reese has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I note that uh, among the list of sponsors, I see no one from um, our partners across the aisle. I'm just curious uh, if you can speak a little bit about maybe the bipartisan support that you have for this. Uh, you listed a whole bunch of um, endorsements of which I recognize, but didn't hear any um, kind of either financial institution folks or others that might agree with this sentiment. Well, I think you'd have probably have to go back in time. I mean, Abraham Lincoln actually used this facility to win the Civil War. He needed capacity to finance, you know, that struggle. Uh, it goes all the way back originally to Alexander Hamilton. So back in the days, it's always been bipartisan, but here in more recent times, because of the polarization, which is actually at the state bank level, I can tell you there's a little bit of bipartisan support, but it has been difficult to step out of the, if I can be frank with you, realms of party affiliation to be able to stand up and take a stand on something that I think is so obviously needed and to the benefit of all the people. So, you know, here locally, we, there's a Columbia Basin Project Phase 2 that many in eastern Washington want to see happen. And uh, this is the only way we're going to be able to do anything on that scale. 
at the national level, uh, I'm not sure if, I think that they were trying their best and there's been some interest across the aisle to get co-sponsors. The bill listed on this uh, joint memorial um, will probably need to be updated. The, uh, it's from the bill that Congressman um, Danny Davis from Illinois uh, dropped last year. He plans on dropping a, a, a new one for this new Congress, but that hasn't exactly happened yet. So that's why the joint memorial says or subsequent legislation or something like that. Representative Chief. Okay. I think I have a question. I think you and I met on this issue years ago, <laughs> and I was on the city council in Kirkland, and I. Um, you know, being in city government, we have many funds and many of those funds, solid waste utility fund and uh, capital budget fund and all of those funds were in separate private bank accounts and I've, and we had investment policies, and, but I was really sort of stunned in the thousands of dollars that the city of Kirkland spent every month. And if you imagine every city in our state spending in private banking fees, um, so I'm just wondering if the if you can give us any insight on the progress of the state bank co-op model that would allow cities to, um, mm -hmm. I think, invest in a state model. Do you have any updates for us on that? And I know it's a little bit off. Yeah, I can, and it's sad news, actually. Um, we had a bill. Senator Kuder is carrying the ball in the, the Senate, and it um, unfortunately died we only have a one vote majority in our uh, business financial services gaming and trade committee. And so it, it was one vote short there. But um, it on the similar model as the National Infrastructure Bank, but at a local level, uh, this actually is not quite a state bank, although it's managed by the state. Um, lending capacity is restricted to local governments and political subdivisions, but it would allow local governments to leverage their capacity as well. So we're hoping maybe next year. You know, it might be NTIB though. <laughs> Absolutely, pull it I would out think so. On an eighth order or something in the house, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Senator Hasegawa? Wonderful. Let's go straight to public testimony then. Vice Chair Reeves. Thank you, Madam Chair. We currently have a few folks signed in wishing to testify on this legislation. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with our in-person testimony um, in preparation uh, for Emily to be able to pull folks into our remote Zoom room. So um, we'll start with folks in the room. Uh, Randy Grine, uh, if you are here. I don't see Randy. Randy, it looks like you actually maybe are online. So uh, we'll go ahead and go, uh, nope, looks like Dale is also, um, looks like everybody is remote today. <laughs> uh, apologies, Madam Chair. Um, so we'll actually go ahead and go to our Zoom room and we'll start with Randy Grine from Bellevue uh, and then we'll go to Dale Lahar from Vancouver and then uh, Martin Tallarico from Seattle um, is up next. And Randy, when you are ready, feel free to, yep, I see you on video and off mute. So go ahead and test, uh, proceed when you're ready. You'll have three minutes. Uh, thank you. I won't need quite three minutes. I could talk about it for three hours, but I will we'll keep it short. Um, first, uh, thank you. Um, uh, my name is Randy Grind. I'm uh, a Bellevue resident, uh, member of the 48th Legislative District. So uh, thank you all for hearing me. Uh, my grandfather lived in Wenatchee in Spokane. Um, he was actually a hobo during the Depression riding the rails. Uh, there's no work, no other options. And there's a personal connection here because the last infrastructure bank built the dams in eastern Washington that he was finally able to find work in. Working as a guard gave him financial stability and allowed him to raise a family. He's not the only one, but... Uh, I'm profoundly grateful. I probably would not be here without that assistance. And as you've heard, our infrastructure is in trouble right now. We haven't kept up with roads, data communications, bridges, and everything else. You've already been told that we need $5 trillion to, to bring us up to an 
adequate measure. And this will do more than that. It provides stimulus that the real economy needs. Uh, and here I'm talking about, uh, uh, about manufacturing, uh, people that actually create things. Uh, it will stimulate absolutely uh, every sector of the economy. And it will, it will do that by providing decent career jobs that will grow the depleted middle class. I'm not going to go over the economic disaster that's hanging over our heads with the over-leveraged and under-regulated banking, but that might give you an idea who is not going to be in favor of this bill. Finance. Um, they make a, they, they make, uh, a uh, fair amount of money off of our money, as uh, Representative Whalen had, uh, had already mentioned. This will blunt the impact and give us time to get that finance in order. Uh, the new infrastructure bank will create real jobs, give roads, rail, and data communications across the country to underserved areas. Um, and this is where we're working on our friends uh, in eastern Washington and hope to get uh, a couple people um, uh, on, on the other side of the aisle to help uh, support this. And it's permanent so that we no longer will have this, this problem of, uh, uh, of uh, paying for new stuff and then we can't afford to keep it maintained. It will save us money in the long run. Um, I urge you to pass SJM 8001 and send a message to Congress that we need action, not political posturing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grine. Uh, Dale Lahar, you are up next. If you can state your name and the organization you're representing for the record, that would be great. And then Martin Tellerico, you're on deck. Hi, um, can you hear me? We can hear you and we can see you. Oh, okay, good. Um, hi, my name is uh, Dale Lahar. I'm a resident of Clark County, Greater Vancouver, Salmon Creek. The, and um, I'm a retired business executive with the Coca-Cola company. Uh, I'm Republicanish, so I'm a little conservative by nature. Um, work for both domestically and internationally for the for the Coca-Cola company, and um, my role has been as an advisor for the National Infrastructure Bank in the Pacific Northwest, primarily in the state of Washington. Um, one of the things that I I, I want to go through my list uh, pretty quickly because I know I've, I've got limited time. But uh, as as mentioned before by Senator Hayakawa, there this would be a national infrastructure bank would be a public public bank authorized by Congress. No increase in national debt, uh, no increase in federal taxes would be capitalized. It could be capitalized up to five trillion dollars using uh, using the money from where the Treasury bond own getting money from Treasury bond owners. And the sale of their bonds and receiving NIB preferred stock as premium interest rate. It would allow states and counties and municipalities and regions to borrow, providing communities with the funds to deliver the needed capital expenditures without needless waiting for national or state appropriations from up, up high, which would we never see this seem to be delivered without, without taxes or levies. Um, Southwest Washington needs to rebuild its Highway 5 bridge. In fact, it may need to build another bridge across the Columbia River, plus a high-speed rail corridor, rather than just sit waiting for appropriations or a levy to vote. And, it, and, and, to borrow from, and to borrow from the bank would be a great asset because essentially uh, you would be able to get a loan directly without having to go, like I say, through an appropriation process. Um, it has a. Um, it would upgrade the, the nation's transportation system. It would have the scale to upgrade the national transportation system, the power grid, affordable housing, high-speed rail, um, large-scale water projects. Four hundred billion. Uh, they have allocated four hundred billion for that. Um, then, uh, from the standpoint of uh, partnering with financial institutions, it would be, it's a smart bank in the standpoint it would partner with financial institutions. So let's say that the state of Washington wanted to create its own state national, state uh, bank and public bank. It would, it would be willing to partner. It's, it's going to be a flexible um, uh, or institution. Um, in fact, it would prevent, it would have the institutional know-how 
to um, and experience to help municipalities and, and other areas get proper uh, people or institutions or businesses to help with the uh, infrastructure. Um, one one of the things too um, uh, is um, they in the in this thing it has it lines with the times. It's it's it would have economic acceleration groups for regional economic accelerators. So regions such as Washington and Oregon could coordinate and plan infrastructure part, uh, projects that could go across state lines or regions. Um, Mr. Lahar, and, I, I'm yes. so sorry to interrupt you, but um, your time has expired. If you could just wrap up your last thought, that would be fantastic. Well, I, I've got, there's a lot of lists. One real fast thing is it does provide a revolving fund for treasuries, in other words, a treasury department could uh, could get a revolving fund for financing uh, local projects, uh, infrastructure projects as well. Uh, again, thank you very much for your consideration, and I hope you will uh, will pass the memorial. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lahar. Seeing no questions, we'll go ahead and move on into um, Martin Tellerico, and then on deck is Helen McConnell. Thank you, Representative uh, Marty Tellerico from uh, West Seattle, the 34th LD, uh, a member there. I'm also uh, involved with Seattle Indivisible and on the board for Washingtonians for Public Banking, as well as a representative for the Northwest for the National Infrastructure Bank, which, which I'm very, very fond of and hoping that you'll pass out of committee today. One of the things um, I wanted to touch on is that, it has been said before, this uh, will not have a sunset clause. What was different than the, uh, in the previous incarnations of National Infrastructure Banks, uh, starting with the Washington administration all the way uh, to the FDR, they all had sunset clauses. They were only allowed to last for 20 years. Uh, we see, we've seen in each case what happened after those 20 years. Things uh, went awry. The nice thing about this bill is it will not have a sunset clause. Uh, infrastructure is not a one, one and done thing. It's something that always needs to be developed, always needs to be fixed, always needs to be approved upon. This money, this bank will provide the funds to do that. Another thing that this bank will do, um, not only will it provide low cost, uh, long term favorable loans for communities, it will also be large enough to provide a grant system for the many communities out there that they don't, they can't even afford a long term low cost loan. Um, so it would be great for them. It, it, it would it would serve all of America. It would jumpstart our economy. It has a Build America plan. Uh, you, we all know what happens when infrastructure improves. We all know what happens when light rail goes in and, and stations are built. The economy comes alive in those communities. We can do the same thing with the National Infrastructure Bank. It will provide broadband throughout the country. A lot of communities can't even approve broadband. We know the water quality in a lot of our uh, communities, not only in, in Washington state and across the, of the country. Uh, lead pipes, those could all be replaced. The National Infrastructure Bank would have the funds to do that. I implore you to pass this out of committee. Uh, let's get it get into the house and get it voted on this year and uh, get, it, um, get it moving. It's, it has, incredible support among the country. Um, a number of states have passed resolutions, a number of cities have passed uh, resolutions in favor of it, and the, the support is growing. We're actively speaking with Republicans. Um, we're, we're having very good meetings with them. Uh, I think that they're, 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 they're interested, and uh, I think it's time that we're, we're, in the next few days we'll see some Republican support on this bill in Congress, we're hoping anyway. Thank you very much for your time, and thank you for considering this, this, this memorial, and please pass it out of committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. We actually have a question for, for you from Vice Chair Reeves. Hi, Martin. Quick question for you. You listed a whole plethora of items um, that you consider infrastructure that this bank could cover. Um, given the role that you have, would you agree that childcare uh, facilities and stuff can constitute national infrastructure? Definitely. And could be covered by this bank? Yes, and I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that question because when a lot of people th talk about infrastructure, they think about hard infrastructure. Um, they don't think about soft infrastructure. Um, this money, since it would be uh, made available for public funding, it would include public schools, it would include public hospital districts. Um, during um, the uh, the Great Depression, when Roosevelt 
um, and, and after the RFC, um, they worked with hospitals. They helped eradicate, I believe it was smallpox. Um, it was really amazing what they can do when federal government teams with, with private industry to get the job done. So yes, uh, 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 um, housing is a big thing too. It would provide low income housing. Um, it would be, and, and the one, one thing I love about the NIB, it has some really smart people on it. They have this uh, dig up once policy. So if, if, a, if, if pipes, if a road needs to be uh, laid, they'd ask what's underneath the road. What's the water line like? What's the sewer line like? Do you need broadband and you know, dig it up once, do it right. Um, like Randy said, interstate projects could be done. We could finally fix the bridge across the Columbia River between um, Washington and Oregon. Um, a, a lot of things. I mean, uh, the more I learn about it, the more I, I like it. I, and I also think it could really heal, help heal our national divide that we have in this country, put people back to work, train workers. It will work closely with unions. A number of unions have supported this endorsement and have endorsed the NIB. Unions have training programs. Um, they would have training programs. Uh, it, I think it'd be, it would be it, it, it would provide money for both hard and soft infrastructure, which is which is very needed, including schools and healthcare as well. So thank you for that question. Thank you so much, Martin. All right, seeing no other questions, we're going to go ahead and move on to Helen McConnell um, from the NIB uh, or with the NIB. I think is that correct, Helen? Yes, that's correct. I'm with the NIB. I'm not a part. I'm I'm a, just an average citizen. I live in Portland, but. I come to Washington regularly, and we've heard a lot about the, the I-5 bridge, but there are many bridges that cross between Oregon and Washington, and they all need upgrades, and they all need repairs, and all the communities affected by those bridges all along the Columbia. Um, anyway, I had a, a little talk prepared, but I decided everybody has covered almost all the points that I had in my talk. What I want to say is I got interested in the NIB sort of accidentally after being interested in public banking. And I have been so impressed with the National Infrastructure Bank Coalition and the thoughtfulness of this proposal is just incredible. If you have, I just encourage you, if you have any questions to set up a time to meet with them, they will answer all your questions. Um, this is not something that's gonna be a handout, that's gonna be a tax burden. This is true economy. And I see people, people need good jobs. They need jobs that are respectable, well-paying, um, so that they can support themselves and their families. And, and I just see us moving farther and farther away from that. And the National Infrastructure Bank is going to create incredible jobs, something like 25 million jobs. Um, and we're going to be rebuilding existing infrastructure and adding new infrastructure. It's time we move into the 21st century. Our, uh, China has done this and we want to, we have to keep up with our so-called competitors around the globe. The United States is starting to look kind of old and worn. We really need to bring this up to snuff. So um, your part today is to um, approve this proposal so that we can get the National Infrastructure Bank going. So I urge you to vote yes on this. And if you have questions, like I said, they set up a time for a complete private question and answer session just for me, for an average citizen. This is a real deal. And um, that's all I have to say today. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. And I neglected to ask you to do this at the beginning of your testimony. Can you state your name and uh, the, full, uh, the full name of the organization you're representing, please? All right. My name is Helen McConnell. I live in Portland, Oregon, and I'm representing the coalition. I mean, I'm just, like I said, an average citizen who's interested in this. And I'm what does the NIB stand for, for the average citizen, so they know? National Infrastructure Bank. Perfect. Thank you so much for your testimony today. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Madam Chair, at this time, that concludes uh, the in-committee testimony for this bill. For the record, we would just share that um, there are folks signed in not wishing to testify, pro 102, con 254, other zero, totaling 356 folks signed in uh, on this legislation. And that concludes the public testimony for Senate Joint Memorial 8001. And that concludes, we'll close the public hearing on Senate Joint, Joint Memorial 8001.